The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. Hey everyone, uh, Paul Akers here. I am the founder and owner of a company called FastCap. We were founded in 1997 in Bellingham, Washington. So a little bit about my background as I get going on my talk, which my talk is titled Lean is Stop, is I was a cabinet maker, general contractor. I built custom furniture. I worked for Bob Taylor. I built the first 2000 guitars that came out of Taylor Guitar with Bob and I learned from a master craftsman. I restored beautiful homes in Pasadena, California, some of the highest level homes in the world. So I had a rich background in manufacturing. But in 1997, my life changed because I invented a very simple product called the Fast Cap, a screw cap cover that peels and stick made out of all kinds of woods to stick over screw holes inside of kitchen cabinets. Because I was a cabinet maker, I developed a great product to solve a problem that I was having and the rest of the world loved it as well. So today, FastCap, my company's like in 40 countries, 3,000 distributors worldwide, tens of millions of dollars in business, 800 products. We launched 30 new products a year. It's really a dynamic organization. But that's really not what I wanna talk about today. What I wanna talk about is how that dynamic organization was transformed. So what happened was, you know, three years into my company's uh, evolution, I was faced with a couple problems. I didn't know how to manage the complexity that my company was uh, delivering to me. So what I did was I hired some consultants and those consultants came into my company and they looked around and I said, can you help me solve my inventory problems? Can you help me solve these management issues that I'm having? And when they looked at what I was doing, they delivered a very harsh message to me that really shocked me to my core because at that time, I was making a ton of money. I had one business of the year. Everybody wanted to work for me. Everything was going good except for this management of this complex issue that had arisen as a result of importing raw materials from around the world. And they delivered this message to me. You're clueless and you don't know what you're doing. Hmm. I looked at them, they were young, they were much younger than me. I knew they didn't make as much money as me and I knew they didn't have the experience I had. They didn't work for Bob Taylor. They didn't restore some of the most beautiful homes in the world. They didn't build all the furniture in their house. They weren't a master craftsman and an expert in manufacturing. But they told me, you're clueless and you don't know what you're doing and here I am, a manufacturer. So to start off with, that was a very harsh message. But I had a choice then. I could have rejected what they said or I could become a little humble and curious. And for the grace of God, I became a little humble and curious and I said, what am I doing wrong? They told me I needed to learn something called TPS, the Kaizen, the Toyota production system, lean manufacturing. I had no clue what they were talking about. It was literally Greek to me and I always tell people, I'm Greek, can't you tell by the dark skin? I mean, and I still didn't understand it. So, I ended up hiring these two young men from Japan who were translators for uh, Toyota consultants. And they came into my facility and in a short period of time, uh, one week, they took processes that I had put in place, I had implemented as the expert, that were taking me 45 minutes, set up some machines, 45 minutes to five minutes. And what happened as a result of that, we were producing tremendous amounts of inventory, big batches of inventory because the setup was so difficult on the machine. So as long as we had the machine set up, let's just run a whole bunch of it. And then we would have to transport it, put it on the shelf, then manage that inventory, dust it off, pay for a bigger warehouse. Everything got bigger, the air conditioning, the insurance, everything got bigger because I was overproducing. And they said, no, 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 no. You make only what you need when you need it. Well, that was like crazy, you can't do that. Well, they showed me that you could if you improved your processes. So I began to really think differently about everything I was doing at that point. And then they went into another part of my company where we make a laser jam, a laser leveling device. And they did this very same thing, 45 minute process. We were building 100 laser jams at a time. It was taking 45 minutes per unit to produce them. And in one week they reduced it to seven minutes by making one at a time, which is 
just so counterintuitive. It was unbelievable. I had this massive workbench. We'd lay out a hundred parts. We'd put a hundred stickers on. We'd put a hundred nut certs in. We'd put a hundred knobs in. And we were piling up all these batches everywhere. And they said, no, 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 no. We're gonna make just one at a time. And then when you make that one at a time, if you get to the end of that process and there's a mistake, you've only made a mistake on one part. So then you go back and fix that one part and you fix the process that created the defect. So then the next one comes out perfect. So you're always managing quality one at a time. Well, these were totally different concepts to me that I'd never understood. And at that point, I was convinced. I got on a plane, I went to Japan, I looked at Lexus, I visited Lexus and Toyota and their tier one and tier two suppliers. And basically my eyes were like opened. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was that incredible. So my life changed. Three years into my company, I thought completely different about everything I was doing. And basically I determined I was clueless and I really didn't know what I was doing and I had a lot to learn. And that was the beginning of my lean journey. So I told you at the beginning of this quick talk, we're gonna do only 15 minutes long, that lean is stop. And the reason why I say that is because what lean is doing is it's giving everybody, not the leaders, not the managers, everybody the ability to stop the line, to stop what they're doing when they come into a problem and fix it now. Now that's a different way of thinking and that's not the way most top leaders wanna think because we need to get production out. We need to increase sales. We need to increase profitability. We need to increase cash flow. We're consumed with these metrics, these KPIs that are actually destructive to our organization. So I pushed all those KPIs aside and I brought in a new set of KPIs. And that KPI was continuous improvement, total participation, quality, one at a time. So my new KPIs were completely counterintuitive to the old KPIs. Because all of a sudden I wasn't answering every question by how much money I make, how profitable it is, even necessarily how fast I was doing things, which is another very counterintuitive thing. Everyone thinks lean is about going faster and being more efficient. Well, certainly if you produce quality and you're making less defects and you're stopping the line and fixing problems, it's inevitable that you're gonna go faster and you're gonna make more money because you're producing less defects. So most people don't even understand the concept that when you produce a defect, that it costs 10 times more to correct the defect than it does to do it right the first time. We call that treating someone in the emergency room. You know, you, you go to the emergency room for the flu or you're sick or something, well, that emergency room bill is gonna be thousands of dollars where if you went to a regular doctor, to be treated, it would be 80 bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it is. It's an entirely different equation. And that's what happens when you're producing defects and you're not focused on quality. You basically have created an organization that runs like an emergency room. So everybody's running around trying to solve all these critical problems. And then you hire high level leaders who are master firefighters. They put on their firefighter hat every day and they're the big problem solvers. They're the Superman syndrome. They run around and solve all the problems for all the minions because nobody else is really thinking about what's going on. Or really, they are thinking what's going on, but you haven't given them permission to solve the problem because maybe they're not smart enough. Well, guess what? I got news for you. They are smart enough. And if you spend the time teaching and training them, you're gonna have a world-class problem-solving organization with world-class problem solvers. So this is basically what happened to me. I stopped, I stopped producing and started teaching and training my people every morning in a morning meeting. We spend a half hour every morning at FastCap teaching and training our people. We've been doing it for almost 20 years. I mean, it's insane what we've been doing. Most people could never get their head around that. We spend thousands and thousands of dollars every day training our people before we ever work. So we really only work about six hours a day out of eight hours. The rest of the time, we're doing three essing, sweeping, sorting, standardized, cleaning our facility, organizing everything, every, making sure everything's perfect, creating improvements. Then we have a half hour meeting. 
Then after the half hour meeting, then we go to work. But we get done in that six hours what most people get done in 40 hours. Our people are so much more productive. We produce so many fewer defects because we've allowed people to stop. I just had someone come to me the other day. They said they're in the aerospace industry and they said, you know, when do, when do you allow people to make these improvements and, you know, do you let them just stop anytime they want? And I said, absolutely. Anytime they want. They're working on a process. There's a problem. They stop the line. They get people around them who can help them implement an improvement. They bring the supervisor in, they work together as a team, they make the improvement, and then they go back to work. But how do you get anything done? Well, <laughs> just the opposite. I, my question to you is how do you get anything done? Because we get more done in the six hours than you get done in 40 hours. I guarantee it because our productivity is through the ceiling. Every, every metric that you could measure our company by is four or five times better than the average company, the average good company. How do we do that? We stop the line. We allow our people to stop and fix what bugs them. And we do this every day, all day long. We've created a stop culture. We see a problem and we fix it. We are weakness oriented. We are focused on our problems. We never sweep our problems under the rug. We never take our problems and give them to the high level leaders to solve with flow charts that take four and five months to implement. We stop the line and we fix it now. And you know, you see this very, very clearly when you go to Toyota and Lexus, you're, you're building these world-class vehicles, the best quality in the world. And you're, you're seeing the whole production line go. And all of a sudden somebody reaches up and grabs a little line and stops the entire line. It all stops. Everybody stop. All the workers up and down, everybody stop. Nobody's working because they understand that quality costs less. They understand that being weakness oriented and focusing on their problems, they don't hide their problems. Toyota has a great saying, no problems, we have a problem. We want your problems. Bring us your problems so we can work together side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Leadership is always on the gemba. They're right next to the workers, helping them improve everything. They have total participation on finding problems so they can improve and improve quality, improve the atmosphere, the work environment. So now all of a sudden, Workers, colleagues go home tapping their fingers on the steering wheel saying, I got a great job. I love where I work. Now we call that emotional energy. All this happens because people are allowed to stop the line. Stop and fix what bugs them. Stop and find the problem. Stop and find a solution. Stop and run the experiment. Stop and learn what works and what doesn't work. We don't care if they run an experiment and they fail at FastCap. Matter of fact, 50% of all the implementation, all the lean ideas fail. We don't care because in doing so, they learn what doesn't work. So then they will finally discover what does work. We've created world-class problem solvers and not a few smart people, the entire organization. One of my favorite quotes of all time was when I was in a company called Hawks in Japan, down in Kishu, Japan. And I was with the president of the company and we just toured his facility. And he had just shown us that every day, the entire company, including the president, is mopping the floors and working and cleaning everything. That's three Sing. The first thing they do when they get there, they polish the windows, they clean the company cars, they do everything. It's the most miraculous thing you've ever seen. And then they have a morning meeting and then they work. And I said to Mr. Matsunaba, and I said, listen, this is unbelievable. What happens when Ford comes here, Nissan comes here? What happens when GM comes here? Because everybody was coming to this Hawks company. And they said, Paul Son, and this is a man with a PhD. Smart people can't believe it can be this simple. You see, we are, we have our big advanced degrees and we have to make things complex to justify our existence. When in reality, the solution 
to creating a world-class organization is quite simple. We follow simple, common sense principles and rise to the top. Those principles are develop your people, believe in your people, teach and train your people, stop the line, fix your problems, face your problems, run to your problems. And they do this all day long. And miraculously, all the problems that most companies have are solved in short order. That's all I did. I learned to create a stop culture. Brought to you by PaulAkers.net, where you'll find all Paul's books and lean resources for free, including the new two-second lean play app, like Audible, but free. To listen to Lean is Lean on the two-second lean play app at PaulAkers.net.